Hello everyone, and welcome to the Brightworks. Today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of a, uh, well, I guess I should preface this with a, um, a bit of an explanation. I did, uh, I did see that the, the last video I did, the sort of general tutorial, uh, there was some, there was some interest in it and, and a lot of people kind of, um, you know, showed, showed resounding interest in it. So I figured I would, I would look at some of the more specific aspects of the game. That was, that video covered sort of a, uh, I guess you could call it a, a general overview, a, a sort of, uh, overarching perspective on kind of the decisions you make when you're, when you're teching, when you're, uh, you're building your eco, all that sort of stuff. Uh, in this video, I'm going to make this incredibly specific, and we're going to dive into very specifically Armada naval strategy. Um, Navy tends to be one of the things that I see in these uh, quote unquote noob lobbies. Uh, it's one of the things that a lot of people are, are very daunted by, um, and there's a lot of pressure to, you know, do, do this naval combat. Uh, and and it, can, it can be a bit tricky because all the boats serve different roles. Um, as well as it being a slightly different playing field. There's not really cover or hills. It's just a flat battlefield. And so you kind of have to know how your units work together and, and that sort of stuff. And so we're going to get on into that. Um, but I'm going to show you from the very beginning. You can see we have an inactive AI um, and myself. And we're going to go play on Deploria Fields, uh, which is a big Navy map with a lot of underwater terrain, um, which is rare, but can, can be pretty interesting. Um, underwater terrain, of course, only really being useful to submarines and uh, other, you know, basically all the under, the underwater craft. Um, not exclusively submarines, because there are some units that you can build that walk along the C4. Um, later T3 units for both factions uh, can go underwater, but also there are some uh, T2 faction, or T2 units for the Cortex faction. Uh, ducks are specifically what they're called. Um, but yeah, you can see Deploria. It's a it's a huge um, 8v8 map with these kind of underwater ridges. You can tilt the camera. There's actually coral down there. I never noticed that. It's kind of a cool detail. But yeah, you can see these ridge lines, these little bumps. Um, some of them don't come all the way up, but these ones do go all the way out of the water. Uh, so that would provide a little bit of protection for your naval units. Please choose your starting location. Um, starting location. That's, that's your alert that it's time to uh, tab back into the game. And uh, anyways... We're going to uh, pick a start, but it is important when you're choosing a navy map, um, or rather choosing a spawn on a navy map, to kind of focus on like what area of the map you're going to try and contest. Um, again, this this kind of goes back into the general strategy of this, but you want to look at these metal spots and see there are like sort of two different types on this map. There's 2.4s and 1.7s, um, and typically a lot of maps will either be a map with high metal and low metal spots, or all the metal is the same, um, and it's important to know which one you're playing on. Uh, that being said, I'm going to spawn here, which I think is a good spawn location. You have four metal nodes. One of them is a richer one. Is it? Uh, actually, no. It's just four of the 1.7s, uh, but those are going to be helpful. Um, and yeah, we're going to get right into this. So maybe much like the um, much like the uh, regular, you know, ground-based armies, you still start with your metal extractors. Um, the, the map that comes to mind is Supreme Street, but I already have a lot of videos covering that, so I don't, I don't really want to talk about that too much. You can just go check one of those out. Um, I have a pretty rigid setup I use for Supreme Street that involves hovercraft um, and then transitioning into boats later. Um, but that's a little more complicated, and we're going to stick to sort of some basics here. Um, so these are a little spread out, so I'm going to go for three mexes before I go for power. Um, typically, that's kind of the rule of thumb. And then I'm going to go for six of these title generators. I might not build all six. Um, I might just build two or, or three and then transition to my uh, my lab. Um, but back to what I was saying before, if, if your mexes are spread out a little bit, typically that's what I would do is I would either capture two of them and then go power. Or if, uh, you know, if I feel like I need the metal uh, or I'm planning on going some, for something, a unit composition that I know is going to be very metal dense, it's better to get this mex early on. Um, so you, I'm watching my energy. I'm seeing, okay, I'm at 75 now, so I probably can just build my bot lab. Um, whoops, I didn't queue that. You can hold spacebar to force something to the front of your queue. Um, and so I can I can tell it to build this bot lab and then go back to building these. Um, that's a really helpful control. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to make the bot lab and the, or I guess the, the, the ship shipyard. Um, and the first thing I always build out of a shipyard is a T1 constructor. 
virtually always um, useful to have this out and about in your, uh, you know, your little ship ship based, uh, well, base for I guess a lack of a better word. Um, now, on a map like this, the, the best thing you can do, whether it's land or sea, is just send make a few constructors and kind of send them around. Um, normally, you'd have like a teammate here and a teammate here, and they would both be pushing their lanes sort of in this direction. So I'm sort of supposed to like send a guy back here and then, you know, kind of send him forward, go capture all these. So I'll just queue him up to do that. The next two units I want to build, I'm going to put my commander on uh, build for this shipyard. I want to build two dolphins. Um, so for Armada, the dolphin is the, like the, it's, it's the lightest ship you can build. Um, the skater, I guess technically the skater is the lightest ship, but I don't really consider it a ship. It's more of like an anti-air. Um, the, the skater is in contrast to, it does what the gunboat and the missile courier do, uh, for, for, our, uh, Cortex. Um, but it, it does it all in one package, uh, but it is a lot lot uh, lighter it's not a it's it's yeah well yeah you get the idea it's a lot lighter of a ship um, i'm gonna use my commander go over here and i'm gonna start making another ship here um so these dolphins they have two assault cannons um which are these kind of the you you'll, you'll probably recognize this from the pawns um if you played a little bit but they shoot out these kind of bursts of sort of rapid fire um and they're 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 very good in uh, like a close melee stop that so we kill our own ship and then what I'm going to do is start building build power, because you're going to need it right away. Um, now, on, on some naval maps, you'll have to go to energy converter economies. Um, usually, I like to build them in batches of six. I think that's just a good number. Um, it's a good good way to scale your economy. You kind of think of it like you have, to, you have to slow down for producing units, and then you build your economy, and then you slow down, produce units, and then you build your economy. And so it, there's kind of these, like, sort of sort of stepping stones here um and then eventually you have to slow down a lot to spike all the way up to t2 um and so this is kind of the the flow chart of the early game uh more or less uh that being said let's let's talk about unit composition here um normally i'd be doing all this a lot faster but i'm slowing down to uh you know kind of kind of explain things in a little bit more detail what do these units actually do? Uh, I'm going to explain Armada, and I'm going to give the names for the Cortex units, um, but I'll, I'll talk about Cortex a little bit later. Um, and anyway, the Dolphin, as we've already explained, it's a uh, fast assault ship. Um, oh yeah, it even says it there. Fast assault Corvette. Uh, it, it basically is a, a speedy little ship that can basically be used for harassment, um, but you're also going to want them in your main unit composition. Uh, because they'll get up right alongside the enemy ships and start laying fire into them. And at the very least, they'll start distracting their main guns um, and pulling them away from yours. There is the Resurrection Sub. Essentially a underwater version of the uh, the Reclaim Bots of land. I'm going to send my commander back here um, and basically tell him to just build like a huge array of these things. If you space these... Just, oh, whoa. Tripped on my words there. If you, spa if you space these out... Uh, one or two clicks from each other they will be sufficiently spaced out so that bombers have a much harder time making them chain react um, so that's a good tip for you you don't you don't lose too much by spacing them as far as you know um, generators per per square goes um, but it does save you from early harassment a lot of the time so it's a good habit to get into um, anyway, back to the unit composition. Uh, the the ship, of course, is just a constructor ship, but it can build everything naval. Um, there's a whole host of different options for what you can go into from Navy. Um, so I'll talk about these because these are actually some later game decisions that you have to make. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll keep talking about the units. Uh, so you have your destroyer. Um, the destroyer is the most expensive T1 unit that you can build. And that's for good purpose. It has a main gun that does quite a bit of damage. Uh, it's a, it's a long-range plasma gun. Um, which, if you're, you know, if you're familiar with bar terms, plasma basically refers to some sort of like artillery gun. Basically, it can like shoot for a long range, kind of lobs a big projectile. Um, and it also has a depth charge launcher, which means that it can attack underwater units. Um, so that's really important to have because you need some sort of way to target, to reliably target submarines. Um, and those depth charges are are heat seeking. Uh, and in fact, let's just queue one of every unit. That, that might be helpful as well. Um, and so those depth charges are, are great for seeking out 
and enemy submarines and then destroying them. So if you have two or three submarines, they'll they'll quickly tear through a, a composition of subs. Uh, you have the Elisaw, which is the assault frigate. Um, there are there are basically mirrored versions of all these ships for Cortex. Um, but the Elisaw is your assault frigate, and it has two uh, two cannons, sort of the the tank equivalent to um, to you know land, but in the sea. Um, and then of course you have your submarine, the Eel. Um, for Armada. I, I believe it's called an Orca for the Cortex. Um, but it's, it's really obvious when you click on the, the thing and you look at these, like, which which one is which. Um, if you also have your settings in, in grid mode, um, which is basically what this is. It says custom because I've tweaked a few things. Um, but most of these hotkeys are in grid mode. If you have it in grid mode, they'll all be in the same position, uh, regardless of what, what uh, faction you're playing. Um, so that'll be useful. Um, now that being said, uh, the last thing to look at is the skater, which you sort of already talked about, but it is basically an anti-air um, slash early harassment, but it also has um, sonar, so it can actually see underwater, uh, which is important, and we'll talk about that right now. So I'm going to send this forward so I have enough metal to uh, talk about earlier in the game. Of course, uh, in, a, in a normal game, you'd be meeting your enemy on this front line, and so you'd want to move your troops you know, up and forward. Um, I have every T1 ship, except for the skater, bound to one hotkey. So it's all just one control group, uh, one auto group. And the reason for that is that you kind of want these big like fleets of ships, so to say. You, you want them all to be able to support each other. Um, extremely helpfully, you can hold control and then left click or right click. And it'll keep whatever position that the ships are in. And it'll rally them all together. So you can see they're all going to move in this like formation that they're in right now. Um, you know, to wherever, uh, wherever I click this. Um, so that can be really handy because you can, you can really specifically micro these and like just, you know, get them super, super into a nice, neat formation. Um, if we just like put these here and put the Elsa here, the destroyer here and put the submarine like underneath or something. Um, and then you can like, you know, you can, you can queue these all around to basically just move wherever you, uh, wherever you want. So if we hold, we hold left, uh, or yeah, we hold control um we can right click and move over there if we hold shift we can then rally them in that same formation wherever um and they'll all stay in that formation until you know they die or we, we we adjust their formation or we add units or whatever however we want to do that but they'll basically all move around um together in unison which is really nice because you kind of want them in a nice formation now the other important thing about navy and this applies to both uh, cortex and armada You'll notice that these have two guns on them, um, most of these ships, the, the Dolphin and the Elsa. Uh, that's actually important, because if you're engaging an enemy um, head-on, like you're actually, like, you know, there's an, say there's an enemy ship right here that you're fighting, um, only one of your gun is going to be able to fire, because these are at the same height, so you, you, you can't fire into yourself, of course. Um, so what's going to end up happening is... Uh, you're, you're actually only using about half of the damage per second that your ship can output. So it is actually important that when you're arranging for naval battles, the, the trick that I like to give is if you're going to put everything in a line like this, let's say, uh, well, here, let me, let me organize these guys into a line. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we were to, if we were to assume that the enemy was, uh, was, was here, for instance, you would bring your ships up and you would, you would bring them towards the top of the defensive line you want to go for. And then you want to queue a little bit downwards, um, sort of southerly. And what's that, what that's going to do is force all these ships to turn and go in this direction. And so it's not perfect, you can see, but it is better. And now, they're, now their broadsides are facing towards the enemy. So if the enemy comes head on towards you from this direction, they're going to have one of their guns firing at a time. Well, you're going to have two of yours firing, you know, on all your ships that can fire two guns. Um, so you're effectively doubling the capacity of your army uh, while maintaining the same, you know, cost of the army. That's a really important concept to get a get a hold of and, and you know just kind of master. Um, I'm going to start up the T2 factory here, uh, but as I do this, I'm going to get into these other options that you have to go in. I know this is a bit less um, rigid than the other one, but I really want you to understand the decisions that you have to make when you're going Navy, because it really does come down to a lot more decision making, um, as opposed to bots or vehicles where you're kind of just following a routine, um, and, and just checking that your enemy isn't doing something to counter your strategy precisely. 
Um, so I'm going to put down a metal storage and an energy storage. Uh, these are generally helpful, um, especially on maps like this where there's a lot of metal available. Um, you're, you're probably going to want a metal storage in order to, to keep yourself safe. Uh, so let's talk about these options that you have. Uh, if I hit V, uh, V is in verified, uh, which you can help me become by subscribing down below. Wink, wink, wink. Uh, the options you have under the protection tab are quite quite numerous. So uh, the most familiar is going to be going up to tech two. Um, that's the the second second uh, you know tech level of, of ships, and these are all vastly superior. Um, I mean, damage constructors. It's how you get into all the advanced stuff. Um, if you're focusing on navy, and indeed this, you know, this would be the map where you do it almost 100% of the time. Uh, you just plop this down, uh, you know, wherever wherever you need it, and you'll start building a T2 naval factory. Um, now these things are expensive, like super expensive, um, just like all the T2, but even more so. Um, 3,200 compared to I think it's 2,900 for most of the other T2 factories, like the vehicle and the the bot lab and everything. Um, but you'll notice that it's not the only choice that you have here. You actually have the naval hovercraft, the amphibious complex, and the seaplane platform. So these are all other options that you have uh, when you're when you're getting into. Uh... Well, here, hold on one one second. Let me build a bunch of these naval energy converters in the background here. So the hovercraft platform produces all of the same hovercraft that you might have already taken a look at if you haven't taken a look at them it's no it's not it's not a problem they're um you know i kind of showcase them in some of my other videos but uh basically they they fill the same roles as the vehicles just with a uh they're, they're a bit more expensive and they're a bit slower um in in a lot of places um on a, a, a lot more terrains i mean by that uh but this this lab does allow you to build uh these hovercraft on the water so that you can use them to flank around and take terrain um, this map they wouldn't be very useful because there's no there's no terrain to cross onto no land to, to bridge onto which is of course the biggest advantage of taking a, uh, a hovercraft platform in the first place um, so you, you kind of have to factor that into your strategy that's that's always an option um, if you're looking for you know kind of a way to harass land um, but you're you're on a naval economy and a naval you know a whole naval setup. Um, you can go for the naval hovercraft platform. What I would usually recommend is the amphibious complex, and I'm going to show this one to you. I'm going to actually build this one because uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, and I'm going to queue up the the naval um, the seaplane factory as well. Uh, but we'll get into that in a second. So the amphibious complex allows you to produce any T1 vehicle that is, and actually a T2 vehicle as well, the turtle. Um, that is amphibious, so it can swim underwater. Um, and so a lot of these, uh, there's there's two anti-air. This is the Tech 2 anti-air, and this is the Tech 1 anti-air. This is the Tech 2 tank, um, and this is the Tech 1 tank. Um, and this is an, a, a, a constructor vehicle. This is a decoy commander. Um, so these are actually kind of cool to build. They're, they're not useful very often, but they're, they're kind of interesting to build because they have like a fake D-gun, and they look like a commander, but they can build mines and... You know other other stuff as well, which is pretty interesting. Um, now the pincer is probably the the most important tank. This is this is kind of a good swarm vehicle. Um, it's a light tank, so it's it doesn't cost very much. It doesn't have a crazy DPS, but it can crawl along the bottom of the ocean and appear on land wherever you need it. So let's produce one of these. And we can take a look at it. Um, and there you can see kind of crawling underwater. There, you can see it crossing the terrain underwater. Kind of a hilariously cute little vehicle, um, but yeah, and this thing this thing can pop up on land and then dive back into the ocean with no problem. Um, so this is a great option if you're looking to harass land, um, but you're 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 the seaplane player. So there's a lot of maps that will have like a. I mean, I'll just do this off the top of my head, but they'll have like a river kind of like this, you know, and then there'll be like crossings where you can you can come across the river with land units. Um, sort of, you know, here or here. Just kind of draw these in. And that's great and all. Um, but say you're the Navy player playing in this corner and you've pushed all the way through here, assuming, you know, this is all water. Uh, you've pushed all the way through here and now you're, you're you know, you, you've kind of secured this area over here and you've basically conquered the whole river. 
Now you've got enemy players up in this area and down in this area. What do you do to attack these players? Because your ships can only attack here and here, right? Like that's your effective attack radius. How do you how do you go about attacking them? Well, one option is to build this amphibious unit complex and start sending T1 tanks. And you build them up right here. And then eventually you can storm them from the uh, from the beaches, so to say, real Normandy-like, and push into these players um, and do a lot of backline damage. That's a game that I just played very recently, um, that exact strategy. I kind of coached a guy through doing that, and it worked phenomenally. Um, so keep that in mind. That's one option that you can go for um, when you're looking for a way to cause damage on the other side of the map. Um, now the other option you have is the seaplanes. So there are the normal aircraft, and then there are seaplanes, and they actually are completely different. They they, they fill completely different roles. Um, there's the construction ship for the, the naval aircraft, and this construction ship is basically the hovercraft equivalent of an aircraft, um, which, you know, that, that made more sense in my head, so let me clarify. Basically, it can build underwater and above water at the same time. Uh, that's 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 really its benefit. So it can it can work on naval projects at the same time that it can work on land projects, or you know it, it, it can work on the both rather. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and the uh, construction ship, you know, it's a little more expensive and it, it costs a little more energy, but for that cost, you get to build on both terrains. Uh, now the swarmer is your fighter, um, and it actually does a pretty good job of of what it says. It's a it's a it's a fairly good fighter. Something. Like Tech 1.5, I guess you could call it. It's in between the, the Tech 2 and Tech 1. Um, but you can pump out a, a huge number of these, and they're actually a really effective fighter screen. Um, in fact, that's kind of how I, how I would classify all of the uh, the seaplane stuff, is that it's like a, it's like a step between t Tech 1 and Tech 2 vehicles, for, or uh, uh, airplanes, rather, for land. Um, in the sense that they all have like slightly higher damage, they're all slightly better. Um, you know, yeah, a little bit easier to control, a little bit more DPS, all, all that good stuff. Um, so, uh, in in fact, the saber is one of these. You can see the seaplane actually is a kind of cool animation where it pops up and opens up. The saber is the Armada gunship. There's one for the uh, there's one for the uh, cortex as well. Um, but you can see it's this kind of cool like triangle thing, and then when you tell it to attack something, it actually shoots out a little laser, um, which is pretty cool. It's the only uh, Cortex thing that I can think of, or Armada thing that I can think of that shoots like a laser blast, not just like a continuous laser. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll tell him to go attack something over here. Uh, the other option you have is the Torpedo Gunship. Um, and this is really useful if you're playing Navy and you want to continue playing Navy, uh, but your enemy is also playing Navy. And so you need some way to harass them without them being able, being able to attack you back. Um, and so you can see this thing has a... Uh, Kind of a weird, I guess, puffin-shaped body. They, you know, they really nailed it on the naming of this thing. But it shoots out these torpedoes um, that are that are these seeking torpedoes. And uh, I guess if we have it attack this our own ship, that you know, it'll be a good enough example. Uh, well, it doesn't quite know how, but uh, it doesn't want to. Doesn't want a friendly fire, but anyway, it shoots these torpedoes, and they'll be able to uh, basically lock onto ships. They don't have any enemy ships to show you, but um, that's basically what they do. Um, then you have the bomber, um, and this is a pretty regular bomber. It, it does, you know, basically all the same things that a that a regular bomber does, um, but its bombs are just uh, high impact bombs, uh, impulse bombs. That's what they're called. Um, so they do a lot of damage, and you can see they they have a huge AOE. Um, so you can you can do a lot of damage with these things. And basically, um, you can you can really, really put out a lot of hurt, especially on T1, like wind farms, solar farms, anything like that. Um, these bombers are tremendously effective against those. Uh, and now the last thing is the Horizon, which is like a scouting drone. I really like the look of this thing, kind of the, the cool drone aesthetic. Um, and this thing is a really, really good scouting ship. You can see it has a huge radar radius and a massive sonar radius as well. Um, this thing is this thing is definitely as good a quality as the tier two um, scouting planes. The tier two, uh, I think it's called a or is it? No, this is the Horizon. I can't remember the can't remember the name of the T two scouting plane, but there there's one for both uh, factions. And this one is just about as good. Um, you can see it has a huge radius um, and perfect for scouting. 
uh, and and that basically covers the seaplanes and kind of shows you the options that you have. So you know if you're going up against the navy, you can build the puffins, and those are a nice option for um, you know dropping a, a ton of torpedoes onto the onto the enemy. Um, these are high damage torpedoes, so it only drops one. So you want like five tor five puffins that you send in, drop their torpedoes, back them off, and then send them in again, drop their torpedoes, back them off, and that's kind of how you play with those. Um, the savers are pretty straightforward. They're gunships. They can target anything above the water. Um, so that's what you'd use for either harassing land or harassing a big um, ship presence without submarines, or at least just the ships of the of the of their fleet. Um, and the bombers, of course, are just for bombing anything above land. Um, do whatever you would like with a bomber. Um, and that, that basically covers the seaplanes. Um, so you can see you kind of have these options, right? So if they're harassing you with air units um, or another player is harassing you with air, air units, you have an option. You can go for the cyclones. Um, if you, you, you know, you, you, you need some other way to do damage and you've, you've captured the river, if we go back to the river example, say you've, you know, you've captured the river and uh, you're, you're kind of built up over here. Um, you know, you can see all of the, all of their eco, all the enemy eco down here. Um, and you want to get to it, but you know that they have, you know, land defenses or something, but they're not going to have anti-air defenses in their base unless somebody else is bombed already or, or, or whatever. So unless they're, you know, really on top of it, they're not going to have a crazy amount of air defenses. So if you manage to get a bunch of gunships all the way forward here, you can just send a big swarm of them forward. And that's going to be a huge amount of damage all at once. Um, definitely enough to catch an eco or uh, maybe sometimes even a, a bot lab or something, you know, some, some sort of uh, production facility. Um, and that's going to be great because your, your, your goal basically once you've secured your river is to start dealing damage onto land however you can. That's, that's kind of how you want to think about it on maps where it's like a, it's, it's some, some water and some land. You want to you wanna win your water so that you can contest land. That's kind of your job. Uh, now, the final thing I've been sort of putting off here is this T2 uh, shipyard, um, because these are definitely some, some of the more complex ones. Uh, we're going to start with the easiest to define, um, probably the easiest of all being the anti-aircraft, or an the uh, anti-nuke aircraft carrier. Um, basically, this is a mobile repair platform, um, which you'll see on uh, T2 constructors can build the aircraft platform. I wouldn't recommend them. They usually just mess up your micro. Um, but the aircraft carrier, however, I would, I would absolutely recommend you, you almost need these as soon as you go T2. Um, so indeed let's build one here. We'll see. I'm going to, oh, sorry about that. I hope you couldn't hear that. Uh, I'm going to set the commander to keep building solar power or not solar power, tidal power. You can see tidal power actually gets really good. If you just kind of passively build a bunch of it, you can actually build up a huge amount of it. So I would always recommend just, uh, idly having something work on big big uh, tidal farms like this. Um, so you can see the anti-nuke ship. It doesn't have a huge anti-nuke radius, but it's definitely big enough um, to cover a, a, a regular base. Um, it also has a radar on it, just kind of, you know, an added benefit. Um, and I would almost always recommend basically just parking one of these at your base. Um, it's a good good amount of security. Uh, now, moving on, the probably the next easiest to explain is the Dragon Slayer, which is an anti-airship. Uh, it has a flat cannon as well as two uh, missile launchers. Um, this is your, you know, your kind of go-to anti-air. Um, if you don't have the air lab up or you don't have, you know, uh, another player doing fighters, you can send the ship out and you can see indeed it has the guided missile launchers um, as well as the flat cannon. Um, so that's, it, it is really good against T1 aircraft. I don't know. Yeah, I can't really get it to friendly fire, but it's, it's very good at taking out friendly aircraft. And you want, you want at least two of these accompanying any of your bigger ships you produce out of here that we're going to get into in just a second here. Um, so after that, we have the Radar Jammer ship. Also very self-explanatory. Just a really nice big radar jamming radius, um, which can be really nice because it's you, you have to go up to Tech 2 to unlock radar jamming. Um, so it can actually be a really huge benefit on the ocean, um, especially considering there's no terrain, right? Like you're not dealing with... You know, rarely you're dealing with with rocks and stuff or mountains or whatever. You're you're dealing with a big flat open field, so concealing your presence is actually really nice. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll talk about the constructors last, um, and we'll we'll move our way up from the top or from the bottom now. Um, so you have the missile cruiser. This is this is called the longbow. There's a, a equivalent I think called the messenger, um, something like that for cortex, and the longbow shoots this. Uh, really awesome missile um, in a really high arc 
and then the missile itself explodes into a bunch of fragmenting bombs. So it's really, really devastating to uh, tier one units, just, just anything on the ground. Pardon me. Uh, and it, it, can, it can deal a lot of damage, especially to light laser turrets and things like that. Uh, the, the longbow also does have a anti-air missile launcher on it. I wouldn't rely on it for anti-air stuff, um, but it's not bad. Uh, next up is the cruiser, the, the paladin. Um, this is an important ship. This is this is probably one of the two things that you'll build the most of out of all of your choices for what you want to build. Uh, th this would be this would be the one that I recommend you start with and get comfortable using. Um, one benefit of this is that you don't have to really worry about alignment um, the same way that you have to do with these ones that have two cannons. Uh, this one's three cannons just swivel on a big gantry on the top. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about it. It's actually got kind of a funny looking face, doesn't it? Never looked at that up close. Um, but it also has these two, which are not aircraft, uh, anti-aircraft missiles. They're actually depth charge launches, launchers. Um, and you can see they, they, oh, it also has lasers on it. I forgot about that. But, it, but uh, basically it has these depth charge launchers. And that means that it can target submarines, um, which is really important uh, role in your, in your Navy. Um, so you're, you're going to want to mix these in as soon as you can, because if your enemy has submarines, they do a ton of damage to boats. And if you have, uh, you know, a ton of submarines, then all the submarines are going to be duking it out underwater and their boats are going to be able to slip by. Um, so it's really important to have, you know, a ship above water that can, uh, it can, it can, it can attack both types of, of, uh, naval vessels. So anyway, moving along. Uh, we have the, the Dreadnought, the battleship, um, and this is a sort of a siege weapon, uh, you can think of it. This, this and the Messenger are kind of your siege options, um, at least for, for sieging land, that is. Um, this vehicle also has the, uh, the staggered cannons. You can see that one of them is a bit higher than the other, so you don't have to worry about alignment with this either. Um, and it has a ton of plasma cannon damage that's that's it. it it just does these huge bolts of plasma cannon uh and you can see it has a pretty huge range um it can arc these things pretty far uh, let's see can it fire yeah so it looks like if you if you're within range it can fire you can see it fires both of them forwards um, which is really nice um but yeah, the, the battleship is nice, but I don't include very many of them. I, I Sometimes I'll build one of them just for like long-range harassment, um, but I really don't build very many of them. I build a lot of paladins and a lot of barracudas, which uh, is the next thing we're going to talk about here. Uh, barracudas are your fast assault submarine. Um, these are very important. These these and cruisers are kind of what I build the most of. I'll, I'll usually build these in like a one to two ratio, so two barracudas and one paladin. The Barracuda is a very, very quick uh, submarine that shoots out really high damage torpedoes. Um, and you can think of this as like your, I don't know, your standard infantry, I guess, sort of the, the underwater tank. Um, we'll tell this guy to stop. Uh, as well as you, actually. Let's just have you fly around. Um, and so this this guy fires a nice, nice... Uh, torpedo missile that does a lot of damage and it really messes up uh, T1 submarines really badly um, but it's also very very fast uh, which is great for if you if you need to catch up to things um, especially underwater units that can't fight back like if you catch a bunch of these tanks or Shivas or uh, Titans or Juggernauts you know anything that's in the water and can't really fight back um, that's a great option um, so now the the two you know expensive ones I guess the dreadnought's expensive but the the serpent is is a very expensive submarine um, it's called a long range battle submarine I would I would almost call it a siege submarine um, that's kind of the role that it fills at least to me um, I'm going to tell this guy to build two more power supplies um, this thing fires a torpedo a super long distance and you can see it has quite a long recharge but this torpedo it i mean doesn't look very impressive but it's actually a huge amount of damage it's 1650 damage um like just just a huge amount of damage uh and it it, it can it can destroy you know enemy uh enemy vessels super super quickly 
So it, it's kind of underrated in the sense that like you, if you can manage to keep one of these alive and keep it shooting at things, it can do a tremendous amount of damage. It's also guided too, which is a great benefit because if you have vision of the thing, the torpedo is always going to hit, um, which is you know tremendous. So that's an option if you're looking to lay siege to a to a naval army um, and you can't find a way to break the tie. The serpent might be what you're looking for. Um, and last but not least. Um, well, I guess we have to talk about the constructors, but uh, the the big the big one that we're all wondering about is the the flagship. And so I'll get this started here. Actually, why don't we build these constructors first, um, just because it'll take a little a little bit less time, um, and then we'll build the the dreadnought in a, in a a second here. We'll talk about the constructors while the epoch is building. Uh, so your your naval engineer, this can build actually a huge variety of things. You can build your construction turrets, which is always useful. Um, you can build naval mines, which are interesting. I've only ever seen them once, but they actually worked really well. Um, you can build destroyers, tier 1 destroyers, which is kind of interesting um, if you're looking for a way to like span these out. You can also build T1 constructor ships. You can build the T1 skater and T1 dolphin. Excuse me. You can also uh, build the platypus, which is a T2 bot for armada um it floats on top of the water and then can transition to walking around on land so it's a really good option for if you're looking for like a, a sort of a light unit to spam uh, swarm your enemies on on land with uh, this can also build the t2 defenses which are it can't build the t2 torpedo launcher but it can build the gorgon which is a big uh a big plasma cannon thing. Um, and it can build the Arbalist, which is a flat gun. Um, same one that's on the Dragon Slayer here. Same sort of cannon, um, just a stationary one. So it does a little more damage, a um, little bit faster fire rate, all that good stuff. Uh, it can build the regular torpedo launchers as well. Um, so you, you have a whole host of different options for, for things that you can build out of this constructor. Now, the, the Tech 2 constructor, this, this has some interesting options for you. Uh, first of all is the Advanced Sonar Station, which you can see has this huge uh, sonar radius. Um, these are nice, but sometimes they're a little bit too difficult to get set up where you need them. Because you don't really need it in your base. You're going to have planes and whatnot flying around here anyway. So you kind of need it at the front line somewhere. But it's not really worth sending a constructor up there. So I don't really use this very often. The pinpointer, however, can be much more useful. Um, these are the same as the pointers on land. Uh, they they just increase the accuracy of your uh, of your firing on radar detected uh, vehicles or planes or you know whatever it is. Also, the epoch is done, but we'll uh, we'll finish the tech two constructor first. Um, you have the defenses, which are the same. And then you have these naval, naval fusion reactors. Um, so these are the same. Well, actually, they're a little bit better than the, the fusion reactors on land. Um, I suppose they can cool themselves in the ocean or whatnot. I, somehow, they're, somehow they're a bit better. Uh, but they do cost a little more. Um, and to correspond with that, you have the naval advanced energy converter, um, which is also slightly more efficient than the land-based version, um, but costs a little bit more. Um, so these in parallel can actually produce a really strong economy. And what I like to do is basically take one of these naval engineers, tell it to build a big array of two of these by holding uh, left alt and shift at the same time. You can queue up these big blocks of things. And then I click on this, uh, this naval guy and I'll usually build two of these, but I'll have one that just builds a big block of, uh, you know, a, a four by however long block of these reactors. And then on the other side, I'll do the same thing, but with the naval energy converters over there. And what you get out of that is a, a huge chunk of economy that's just passively building in the background, and it kind of pays for itself as you build it. Um, so that's always a, a, an awesome option um, for if you're looking for some way to uh, build up your economy. Start, start building that huge T2 economy, um, and, and that lets you spam units and whatnot. Um, the other thing is it can produce a amphibious gantry. So this is for your T3 units. And all these T3 units uh, are, are sort of irrelevant to the case, but we'll we'll talk about them anyway. Um, let's see, let's have you start building this over here. Get that going in the background. Um, so we'll talk about those T3 units, um, but before we do that, let's talk about the uh, advanced metal extractor, which is essentially the same as an advanced metal extractor on land, it's just underwater. 
launcher and you have the advanced torpedo launcher now these are extremely powerful i was actually surprised i used these in a game uh, maybe about a month ago uh and it they they were able i think i had about 10 of them and they were able to take down a juggernaut before it it you know crossed the ocean and managed to get to the little the little base i was protecting um so i was actually very pleasantly surprised with how much damage these can actually do um it's such a such a tremendous range um, you can see these things can attack for a huge radius. That that blue circle there is their uh, their vision radius, their their sonar radius, which is basically just vision underwater. The red radius is their actual attack range. So if you have scouting planes up in the air, these can actually attack almost twice as far as they can see, um, which is which is really impressive. Um, and that basically covers everything for the T two constructor. Um, so real quickly, let's talk about the epoch. This is your flagship, and both both teams have one, but they definitely function differently. Um, from least impressive to most impressive, you have a anti-air missile battery, um, two of them, uh, and those function to basically clear away any anti-air or you know any airships that are attacking. Um, the Armada version has three large plasma cannons, um, you know, two two on the sides and one at the front. Uh, and those are like a short range plasma cannon, and they're really good for taking out ships and other uh, you know, there any, anything above land really, they'll devastate. Um, but the real, the real golden, you know, thing on this on this ship is the artillery range, um, which are the big cannons. And you can see it is tremendous. I mean, you can really shell away for miles with this thing. You see these things firing, and it's like a huge. Like you can you can shell away a base is way far away. So if you do manage to get one of these up, this is another great option for sieging bases and whatnot. If we set the attack range closer, you can see these lighter plasma cannons firing. Sort of the same thing. Um, but yeah, they, they, they put out a huge amount of DPS. Uh, it's worth noting that the, um, the Cortex version of this has one big cannon with four guns, four barrels, um, and four heavy laser turrets on the, on, the, on the front of the ship. So it's a little bit less of a siege weapon. It's still, it still can siege, but it's not uh, quite as... as uh, gauss heavy there's a lot more lasers to it uh anyway the last thing i wanted to talk about was these uh tech three units that you can produce under here so tight these are these are basically all the amphibious units i mean this is a tech two unit so it's really only two t3 units um first being the marauder which is a great t3 unit because it's very fast it does a, a really high damage high amount of damage compared to tech two uh, uh units and let's move this guy up under the hill so you can see what he looks like out of the water. Underwater, they don't have an attack. They just traverse, um, which is important to know because they are they are weak underwater. That's what that means. This is the Gorgon. I guess I'll show you while that guy's traveling. Uh, see, it just shoots this, like, spray of, of uh, cannonballs, I guess, towards the uh, towards the enemy. Um, very neat for, for uh, bursting down ships as, as quick as you can. Um, so here you can see the Marauder in all of its glory. It's kind of got this like chicken leg thing going on with it. Um, but it actually has a really nice Gauss attack. Um, and it can do a lot of damage. These are these are what I prefer to use to destroy enemy backlines um, because they're so quick and they do such a good amount of damage that they can really get into an enemy's base and, and blow up reactors and whatnot super, super easily. Um, so that's a really great option. And of course the last one being the Titan. Um, which we'll have coming out here in just a second, but it has its uh, blasters, its high energy, long range, ground to ground, slash ground to air, laser of doom, <laughs> um, and then the missile launcher as well. That is just a, uh, a an all around package of destruction, um, which it should be. I mean, this is your this is your end game unit, and and it really should be the best that it can. Um, so we'll we'll take a look at that in just a second. But overall, that's kind of the, the, the breadth of the naval uh, artillery and, and just armaments that you have available to you. And the important thing to remember is that Navy, when you're looking at it from a, from a tactical standpoint, it's much, much more effective as a cohesion of units. So, so you have a mix of cruisers and submarines and a few anti-airships. It's much more cohesive uh, as, as a big mixture of units than it is as just a spam of a bunch of T1 or T2 units. So you do want a lot of submarines, but I would, I would usually queue up something like this and put repeat on. And I would call this my composition because it's 
you you have the underwater uh, attack power of the submarines, uh, which basically means that once you kill their uh, ability to attack underwater, your submarines are, are unlimited damage per second. Um, your paladins, which are your way to counter their underwater attack power, um, and the dragon slayers, which take out any of the airships above. And so with this combo, this you know kind of simple simple uh, collection of units, you can actually do a huge amount of damage. And this is what I would ideally use to contest any uh, you know shoreline or basically any time I have to contest a uh, a, a section of the map. Um, and now I'm just going to show you a titan, just because uh, you know I think they're really neat and worth showing off. So that's its laser. Let's see if we can get it to step up high enough to use its blasters. Maybe not. When we be on this platform, it'll be it'll be high enough. Oh, can you make it up? Nice. Okay. So there's its hand cannon things. Um, it also has a missile. Don't know if I can make it fire that though. I guess not. Um, yeah, it has this little missile tube on its back that it'll fire missiles out of as well. Um, not really a not really a, a, a water vehicle, but it is technically amphibious, so you can move these underwater and basically pop them up. You know, using your river, you can you can send them back this way and and uh, pop them up. You know, over here, over here. Um, that being said, I think that's basically all I wanted to cover for this naval video. Um, like always, feel free to uh, leave a comment underneath if you have any more questions about navy. Um, or if you'd like me to start delving into Cortex, I think I'm going to head that direction anyway. Um, so rest assured for my Cortex players. Um, I may hope to crush you on the battlefield, but I, I can respect your decisions. Um, anyways, I think that's going to be all for today. Hope you have a great one. See you next time. Cheers.